This is Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'm going to cover some aquatic insects and their adaptations. Every inland water body, whether a river, stream, or lake, supports a biological community. The most familiar components often are the vertebrates, such as fish and amphibians. However, at least at the macroscopic level, invertebrates provide the highest number of individuals and species and the highest levels of biomass and production. Some representatives of nearly all orders of insects live in water and there have been many invasions of fresh water from the land. Insects have been almost completely unsuccessful in marine environments with a few sporadic exceptions such as some water striders and larval dipterans. Aquatic larvae are typical of many diptera. There may be over 10,000 aquatic species in several families, including non-biting midges, biting midges, mosquitoes, and black flies. Dipterans are holometabolous and their larvae are commonly worm-like. They have unsegmented prolegs, and some have sclerotized head capsules, while others have more maggot-like heads. The larval tracheal system may be closed using gills, or open with a variety of spherical locations, including a terminal elongate respiratory siphon. Pupation normally occurs underwater. Development time varies from 10 days to over one year, with many multivoltine species. Adults may be ephemeral to long-lived. At least some dipteran species occur in virtually every aquatic habitat, from the marine coast and salt lagoons and sulfurous springs to fresh and stagnant water bodies, and from temporary containers to rivers and lakes. There are about 4,000 aquatic and semi-aquatic, including marine, hemipteran species in about 20 families worldwide. These possess the characteristics of mouth parts modified as a beak and forewings as hemilytra. There is often reduction, loss, or change of wings. However, many aquatic hemipterans that can fly often seek newly created ponds to avoid unfavorable conditions. Water striders scavenge or are predatory on the water surface. Diving taxa are either predatory, for example, back swimmers, the water scorpions, and giant water bugs, or Phytophagus detritivores, for example, as in the water boatmen. The diverse holometabolous order Coleoptera contains over 5,000 aquatic species, although these form less than 2% of the world's described beetle species. Major families of Coleoptera that are predominantly aquatic in larval or both larval and adult stages are the whirligig beetle, the predaceous diving beetle, crawling water beetles, water scavenger beetle, marsh beetles, water pennies with their characteristically flattened larva, and rifle beetles. Gas exchange in adults usually involves temporary or permanent air stores. Pupation is terrestrial. Coleoptera exhibit diverse feeding habits. Both larvae and adults of most species are predatory or scavengers. Megalopterans are holometabolous and include alder flies, dobson flies, and fish flies. Larvae can be up to 10 centimeters long. The larvae are prognathous with well-developed mouth parts and can give one heck of a bite. They have gills consisting of segmented lateral filaments on the abdomen. The larvae, sometimes called halgramets, have 10 to 12 instars and take at least one year, usually two or more, to develop. Pupation occurs away from the water, usually in damp substrates. The larvae are sit-and-wait predators or scavengers in standing or flowing water and are intolerant of pollution. Aquatic insects show several mechanisms to cope with the much lower oxygen levels in aqueous solutions. In a closed tracheal system, the most common way of increasing surface area for gaseous exchange is through gills. They are usually abdominal or caudal, but even anal, as in the stonefly nymph. For aquatic insects with open sporacular systems, there is a range of possibilities for obtaining oxygen. Aquatic insects exhibit a variety of ventilation behaviors that disrupt the oxygen-depleted behavior by rippling the water. Many immature stages of diptera can obtain at atmospheric oxygen by suspending themselves from the water meniscus in the manner of a mosquito larvae and pupa as seen in this diagram. The spiracles in the terminal respiratory siphon of the larva and thoracic siphon respiratory organ of the pupa have direct access to atmospheric oxygen. If an aquatic insect uses atmospheric oxygen, the low levels of dissolved oxygen, such as occur in stagnant waters, is not a concern. Other adaptations include insects that can pierce plants with a respiratory siphon to extract the oxygen in roots, 
and temporary air stores or compressible gills to store and extract oxygen, especially in beetles and true bugs. Flowing water is called lotic and standing water is called lentic. And depending on where the insect lives, different adaptations are required. In lotic systems, the speed of flowing water influences one, the substrate type with boulders deposited in fast flow and fine sediments in slow flow areas, two, the transport of particles either as a food source for filter feeders or during peak flows as scratching agents, and three, maintenance of high levels of dissolved oxygen. Those that live in strong currents tend to be dorsally ventrally flattened, as in water pennies, sometimes with laterally projecting legs. Others construct cases to assist in streamlining, as in caddisflies. Several aquatic larvae have suckers that allow the insect to stick to quite smooth exposed surfaces such as rock faces on waterfalls and cascades as in these black fly larvae. Many lotic insects are smaller than their counterparts in standing waters. Their size together with a flexible body design allows them to live in cracks and crevices of boulders, stones, and pebbles in the bed of the stream or even in unstable sandy substrates. Behavioral strategies include one, insects will also strategically drift from an unsuitable location, and two, some insects burrow deep into the substrate. With the exception of wave action at the shore of larger bodies of water, the effects of water movement cause little or no difficulty for aquatic insects that live in lintic environments. However, oxygen ability is more of a problem and lintic taxa show a greater variety of mechanisms for enhanced oxygen uptake compared to lotic insects. The lintic water surface is used by many more species such as water striders than the lotic surface because the physical properties of surface tension in standing water that can support an insect are disrupted in turbulent flowing water. They can use water repellent hair piles on the legs to avoid breaking the film. Water striders move with a rowing action and they locate prey items by detecting vibrations on the water surface. Under the water, larvae of many mosquitoes feed and hang suspended by their siphons. Whirligig beetles straddle the interface between the water and the air with an upper unwettable surface and a lower wettable one. Other insects such as diving beetles and many hemipterans dive and swim actively through this zone in search of prey. In the littoral zone, in which light reaches the bottom and plants can grow, insect diversity is at its maximum. Temporary bodies of standing waters may last for as little as a few days as in water-filled footprints of animals, rocky depressions, pools beside a falling river, or in impermeable clay-lined pools filled with flood or snow melt. Even though temporary, these habitats are very productive and teem with life. Aquatic organisms appear almost immediately after the formation of such habitats. Amongst the macroinvertebrates, crustaceans are numerous and many insects thrive in ephemeral water bodies. Some insects lay eggs into the newly formed aquatic habitat within hours of its filling. Others colonize it from desiccation resistant eggs already deposited into the dry side of a future pool, such as some odonates and many mosquitoes. Adaptations in these areas include rapid or staggered development with increased food quality and less competition and a greater diversity of sizes with metamorphosis hastened as a habitat diminishes. Certain larval midges can survive drying by resting in silk or mucus lined cocoons among the debris. Persistent temporary pools develop a fauna of predators including immature beetles, bugs, and odonates which are offspring of aerial colonists. Mangrove or salt marsh communities are transitions between fresh and marine waters. They support a complex phytophagous insect fauna on the emergent vegetation as well as biting flies, mosquitoes, and biting midges. At the littoral margin, hemipterans stride on the surface, some venturing onto the open water. Flies and beetles are diverse on sandy and muddy marine shores, with some larvae and adults feeding along the strand line often aggregated on or under stranded seaweeds. I remember leaving Roatan's beach with a ton of bite marks from noceums. No, these are not my legs. In the marine zone, there are several types of biting midges that live on mats of green algae and even on coral reefs. 
The only insects on the open ocean are water striders, which have been seen hundreds of miles away. Living in salty waters, submerged insects can alter their osmoregulation to reduce chloride uptake and increase the concentration of their excretion through malpighian tubules and rectal glands. Insects can be used to monitor the health of an aquatic system. Typical responses observed when aquatic insect communities are disturbed include increased abundance of certain mayflies and caddisflies as particulate matter, including sediment, increases, increase in numbers of hemoglobin-possessing bloodworms as dissolved oxygen is reduced, loss of stonefly nymphs as water temperature increases, substantial reduction in diversity with pesticide runoff, an increased abundance of a few species, but a general loss of diversity with elevated nutrient levels, eutrophication. In conclusion, aquatic species can live in different types of water and have various adaptations to survive. They are indicators of aquatic health and play an important role in those systems.